Okay, shout out to some friends because we have a new group here today. But the fact is, is that there's people who are gone. Who is still gone again? Our part-time student? Brain Thatcher. What should we do about that? Um, just... What message do you have for him? Get to school. Okay. A parametric equation is an equation whose variables are determined by a shared parameter. A shared parameter. Parametric, very good, yes. Comes from a Greek word. Nope. So, this is my friend Jake. Jake from State Farm who wears Green Bay Packer stuff. So put a G in the middle, and he's sad because he's wearing Green Bay stuff, okay? And he's going to take his shot his, for a shot put, and he's going to toss it. There it goes. Boom, 70 feet. Nice job. Okay, way to go, Jake. As Jake throws this, there are certain variables that change. Can somebody tell me something that changes about the shot the height changes so we'll call that the y variable okay the speed at which it's traveling may change the distance in terms of x will change now there's another variable that's changing usually what we do is we write an equation where x and y are related but what we like to do with parametric equations is we write x related to something and y related to that same something. And here's what we like to choose. We often choose time. So the variable is t. And so we can write a function for x in terms of time and write a function for y in terms of time. Because time is changing, right? As time goes by, the shot goes farther. As time goes by, the shot may uh increase in height it may decrease in height depending on what time it is and so therefore you can see that we have a nice example here where we have um, a an equation a parametric equation where we have x is equal to t squared minus 3t and then y is equal to t minus 1 and so what we do is we generate t values and t doesn't have to be time but most commonly it is time so I'm going to start at time equals zero, and I'm going to generate table values. If time is equal to zero, what is the x value? It is zero. If time is equal to one, what is the x value? Negative two. If time is equal to two, x is negative two again. If time is three, x is zero time is four x is four squared is 16 minus 12 is four five i get five squares 25 minus i get 10 is that we said 10 and if uh we'll go up to six 21 maybe not maybe 18 it's okay all right, so I generated a bunch of x values. Now what I'd like to do is generate a bunch of y values. It says that y is whatever the time variable is, and then we subtract 1. So if t is equal to 0, then y is negative 1. And then 0, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, so on and so forth. Well, I'm going to make a graph here. I've got 20, 10, 5. Okay, so I have these points that I will plot because I have an x-axis and I have a y-axis. I do not plot the t-values. They simply help me generate the x and y values. So I go 0, negative 1, negative 2, 0. 
negative 2, 1. Zero two. Four three. Ten four. And eighteen five. What shape does it make? A parabola, right? A horizontal parabola. But you can see we only get a portion of it, don't we? We don't get the whole piece. We just get a small part. And that's due to how it's controlled by our T values. Watch what happens when we grab our calculator. Normally, are you able to graph a horizontal parabola on your calculator? Why? Because it's not a function. But if we go into mode and we select, instead of function, we select parametric. I go into y equals, you can see that you're given x values and y values. So x is written as t squared minus 3t. And y is written as t minus 1. It's, it's your variable. As I go into my window, I'm going to choose my t value in this situation. We chose it to be 0. And we went all the way up to 6 for the t value. The step, leave it 0.13. The x minimum, negative 5. x maximum, we went up to 20. We have a tick mark every 5. On my y minimum, minimum I went to negative 6. y maximum, I went to positive 6. And I scale every 1. I press graph. Do I get a curve similar to what I have there. I do. And notice how it just graphed that portion. If I were to change this window, and instead of going a T max to 6, if I want a T max to 4, you can see I only get that much. If you went to your window and you said, well, I want to change that to uh, 10, and I'm going to change this start to negative 5, even though we don't really know what negative time means, um, you can see now you're getting the whole piece. If you change your step value, let's say instead of 0.1, you made it 2. You can see it's going to generate the curve very quickly and not very accurately. Whereas if we change it instead of 0.1, if we change it to 0.01, it's going to take a while. It's taking its time. It has that many more increments. And so we sit and we just... Kind of watch it. And I don't have the ability to stop mine. You do. You can press, uh, if you press on, it will actually stop it. So um, I'm bored of this. So we're going to just reset my calculator. So there we go. All right. So let's try the next one. The next one says, let us write an equation for the parabola by eliminating the parameter. Well, I'm going to take that same equation, which is x equals t squared minus 3t and y is equal to t minus 1, and I'm going to try to write a new equation that's in rectangular form, meaning the t value is gone. How can I get rid of the t value so I have just x and y? Solve for t. y plus 1 is equal to t. So I'm going to take this and plug it right in there. So I have x is equal to y plus 1, quantity squared, minus 3 times y plus 1. What do you get when you square that out? Combine like terms, x is equal to y squared minus y minus 2. Done and done. So, the first part of your assignment can be asked to do the following. Generate a table of values, sketch a graph based off those table of values, and then eliminate the parameter. Do you think you can do that? 
is a very brief introduction of parametric equations. We're just going to do two more examples, and they're going to, the first one's going to go very quickly. I would also expect that you would be able to type into your calculator an equation. So if I go into my y equals, uh, let's see, mode, I'm going to go down to parametric, and I'm going to change uh, the y equals. I've got 3 cosine of t, and I've got 3 sine of t. But notice what happens. It has this restriction where it only wants t to be between 0 and pi. As I go to my window, I see t is 0, but the t max value is not pi. It's actually 2 pi. So if I change it, what kind of shape do I get? I get a semicircle. Why do I only get a semicircle and not a whole circle? Yeah, if I were to change that to 2 pi, now I get the whole piece. And it's fun. You can actually kind of play around with it and decide what portion you want. I, I could start at pi over 4, and I could end at 3 pi over 2. And whoop. as you look at that graph, you can see it's starting up here at pi over 4, and it ends down at power two. You can control how much of the graph you're able to generate, which anytime you use uh, things in physics involving motion is, is a nice thing to do. So that's one advantage for parametric equations. All right, last problem. Flip it over to the back side. We jump to this part right here, example five. This is an example that is currently not sitting in your study guide for the final exam. However, if I had a chance to rewrite the study guide, which I gave to you, I would rewrite it and I would include this as a problem that you would prepare for for the final exam. Somebody said, does that mean it's on the final exam? I said, no, but there's a chance. They said, what's the chance? I said, between 20 and 80. They said, so there's a 60% chance? I said, no, 60 isn't even in the middle of 20 and 80 and whatever. So we stopped at that point. So. Um, here we are. We have these values. I need to find parametric equations for a line with the given properties. It has a slope of 4 and passes through the point negative 2, 5. Now, I'm going to show you that you know how to do this problem already for rectangular form. In order to write an equation for a line, what we need is we need slope and a point on the line. And we have slope. It's 4. Point on line is negative 2, 5. Does anybody remember the equation that we use to write an equation for a line? y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So I plug in the 5 for y1. y minus 5 is equal to 4 times x plus 2. Now I solve for y. y equals 4x. I have a plus 8. And so I get a plus 13. This is what we call rectangular form. I don't want you to come up with rectangular form for this problem. I want you to come up with parametric form. And in order to come up with parametric form, we're going to start by generating some values. I'm going to start with time equal to zero. I need an x and y value when time is equal to zero. And here's where we have the ability to make a choice. What is the first point on the line that you would like to start at? Where would you like to start? Here's a question. Can I start at 0, 0? Is 0, 0 a point on that line? You could start at 0, 13. What's another point that you know is on the line that we could start at? Negative 2, 5. I'm going to choose to start at negative 2, 5. Beautiful bride turns 37 today. Happy birthday, Kelly, in case you're watching. She likes to check out math videos on YouTube sometimes. So. What's so funny about that? Stop dissing my wife, Ella. Negative 2.5.
So I start at negative 2, 5. Let's advance forward in time. I'm going to advance to time 1. As I advance to time 1, I'm going to advance to a new point. How do I get to a new point? Slope of 4 means I move up 4 and over 1. So that would bring me to this spot right here. So I move up 4 and over 1. What point does that bring me to? Very good. I'm going to advance again. I'm going to advance to time 2. What point would that bring me to? 0, 13. Hey, this is a good time. Let's do it again. Let's go to time 3 and time 4. As I advance to time 3, what's the point move to? And at 4, I'd be at... So every time the x value moves up, as the t value moves up 1, the x value moves up 1, and the y value moves up 4. So let's write equations. x in terms of t and y in terms of t. You don't have to include the t on it like I did, but that's how your calculator does it, and that's most of the time how calculus textbooks and other books write it. But anyway, so we have uh, x of t, so the x equation in terms of t is equal to, um, and y. So let's look at the y equation. As t goes up by 1, x, y goes up by so the slope of the y is 4. So 4 times t. How'd you get plus 5, Jill? At 0, it's 5. If you plug in 0 for t, you got to come up with 5 for y. And if you try plugging anything in, let's say you try plugging in 4. 4 times 4 is 16, plus 5 is at 21. It'll work for all of them. Okay. Let's look at x. As t goes up 1, x goes up. So the slope is, so I got 1t minus 2. And anytime you plug in a t value, say you plug in 1, or I say you plug in 3, 3 minus 2 is 1. So you can see you get that coordinate right there. That's parametric form. This is rectangular form. They create the same line. And you're like, well, I want to do, I want to do something more exciting than a line. I want to do like a parabola or, you know, cubic or natural log. We just don't have time for that. So, okay. But you got time for an assignment because you are super smart and you're going to do what's difficult. So, good for you. You're going to work on page 794, 1 through 3, 5 through 7. Make a table, sketch a graph, eliminate the parameter, follow your notes because I have a lot of examples that will help you there. And uh, then make sure that uh, 20 through 25, that's where you're going to write those equations for those lines. Do as we do in class, and you'll be fine. Again, just a brief introduction. So one day in polar coordinates, one day in parametric equations. We end the year with what I think is some of the most exciting material that you see of all, and that's sequences in series. Um, I wish we could spend a whole course on it. Question, Jay Aki. This is only the second homework assigned. Very good. Thank you for clarifying. Does anybody have a different shirt they could borrow to Jake or to Callie for that matter? Anybody? Anybody? Okay. All right. We'll send them to the office. Dress code violation. 